So we're back out on the site and what I want to do in this video is show you how we can set out a pattern rafter for a hip roof. So last the last video we did a pattern rafter for a gable roof for this building. So this time we're going to change the design and put a hip roof onto this. So there's a couple more members in a hip roof than there is in a gable. With a gable roof we only had what we called our common rafters. Uh, and that was pretty much it. Now we've got a hip roof. We've actually got to have our hips, which are these members here. We've got to have this rafter here, which is pretty similar to a common rafter, but it's actually called a crown end rafter, because obviously it's on the end of the roof. And then we've got these shorter rafters, which are our, what we call creepers. They're on both sides of the hip, on both sides of the roof so that's what we've got to work out so when we finished our gable pattern rafter we had our pattern rafter set out and we had the center line of our roof marked we had a reduction for where our hip sorry where our ridge was and where our rafter was going to butt into the ridge so that was our ridge reduction we had our plumber level bevel marked for our bird's mouth and we had our overhang marked on our pattern rafter. So now what we need to work out is the length of our crown end rafter and the long point of all our creepers. So if we go and have a look at the set out of our roof, um, with a hip roof what we need to work out is exactly where our common rafters and our crown end rafters are going to meet so way to do that is take our half span which is this distance here 1810 in this case measure it down the roof and that will give you the center line of our centering rafters so that's those ones there so obviously on both ends of the roof on both ends where there's a hip we're going to have a centering set of centering rafters and then from the outside of the centering rafter, that's where our crown end goes in. And if you have a look at that on plan, you can see that our common rafter was 10 mil, or half the thickness of the ridge, shorter than our center line. Now our crown end rafter is half the thickness of our rafter shorter than our centre line. So in this case 22 and a half mil. And they're both planned dimensions. So if you go back to our pattern rafter from our centre line we can measure back 22 and a half mil and that will give us the reduction for our creeper, or oh, sorry, our crown end. So first one's ridge reduction, second one is our reduction for our crown end. Now the next thing we need to do is work out our creeper reductions. So for our first one, we know that our creeper on rafter spacing is 450 mil in this case. It could assume that we just simply have to measure 450 mil on plan, and that would give us the uh, the reduction for our creeper, but as you can see with this little illustration here, if we do that, our creeper actually ends up in the wrong spot because one, it's obviously sitting halfway through our hip, but it's also it's not centered. This dimension here should be from the center of the centering rafter to the center of our creeper. So what we need to do is we need to make some adjustments so what we actually need to do is move this back this distance here which is half the mitre thickness of our ridge and the way we can work that out is you can either do Pythagoras so half the thickness of the ridge which is 10 and we then, then you'd have to use uh, because it's a 45 degree angle, uh, 10 squared 
uh, plus 10 squared would give you 14.14 or you can do uh, 10 divided by 45 cos equals so it gives us that the 14.14 so we're just using half the thickness of the ridge and working out what the mitre distance of that is so that's our 14.14 So that brings the rafter back to there. It then needs to go across 22.5mm to this point here. And obviously we don't have a big gap, so then we need to move it back up the roof 22.5mm or half our rafter thickness. Uh, so obviously this is for a 45mm rafter. If you're using 35, you'd be uh, looking at 17.5mm. So that would actually move that creeper up into a position there, which would be exactly where we want it. So once we do those calculations, we work out that our plan reduction is actually 442mm plan measurement, not 450 So when we go over to our pattern rafter, there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can either use our steel square, measure down our 450 mil then add on our half hip of mitre which is 14.14 and then take away our half our rafter thickness which was 22 and a half to give us our dimension or actually our long point of our creeper uh, we could transfer straight off the square our 442 which gives us the same mark or the other option is to simply calculate what the true length of that would be so to do that we can take our 442 divide that by 30 cos which is our roof pitch, and that gives us 510.3, but it's hardly worth worrying about. So 510mm down the roof as a true length for our reduction. So once we've worked out our first rafter and made the adjustments, we can then go down and add in our remaining creepers. So we can do that a couple of ways as well. We can use our steel square, use our plan length, which now is just going to be the same as our spacing, so 450 at a time. Down the roof. Until we get past, or as close to, or less than 450mm um, to our bird's mouth. So you'll usually end up with one that's sitting pretty close to the bird's mouth, but you need that one um, because... It's going to pick up your fascia out uh, at the eave line. Um, the other option, again, if we calculate, is we can take our 450mm, divide that by our pitch, cos, and equals. That gives us 519.6. So we could actually measure our 519.6 down the roof. And that too would give us the position of our creeper rafters. Uh, another method is if you actually mark out where your creepers were going to sit on your plate, you can actually then directly measure the plan distance. And the reason we can do that is that we measure from this point here which already allows for half our mitre thickness. So that gives us the plan length of our rafter fairly directly. Um, the problem with this is that you know, it's generally two and a half, three metres up in the air. So the, the other option is to recreate that set out on the back of your pattern rafter. So we've got our centering rafter, 450 centres, uh, actually marked 
uh, the position of our hip. Um, we've got our half span distance there. And we can actually then measure from uh, this edge of the um, hip to the long point of our creeper and actually get the exact plan distance straight off that set out. And then you could use a steel square or you can use um, the cos method and we can take those distances, convert them to true lengths as I've done there and then mark those directly uh, from the back of the bird's mouth directly onto the pattern rafter. And once we've done that, we've uh, marked out our pattern rafter. So now the information we've got on here is still got our centre line of our roof. Our first mark is our uh, reduction for our ridge. The second mark is the reduction for our crown end rafter. We've then got a number of reductions for our creepers, depending on how many we need. Bird's mouth is still there and our overhang. So with that set up as our pattern rafter, we now have all the information we need to go ahead and cut our common rafters, our crown end rafters, all our creepers for our hip roof.